Good evening, everybody. I first want to say it is an honor to be here. I am so very grateful for all the people that have made this opportunity possible for allowing me to attend today to deliver this message of peace. I want to acknowledge, acknowledge Jamira and, and David. I'm, I am truly inspired by their passion, and I am humbled by the other speakers' uh, speeches. Today, I'm not here to give a speech or speak to your ears only, but I am here to give, uh, deliver a message and speak to your hearts. This message comes from my heart. It comes from all the brothers and sisters that are suffering from the violence every day they see in their communities. It is a message that is, is a message from the brother that is locked up in the jail cell, a sister that has been raped and disrespected, of the babies that have lost their lives to bullets, and of the parents that have had to bury their babies because of this violence. This is a message from the people caught up in the world of violence and fear. My story is unique, but the things that I've seen growing up are universal. I have grown up in a family that was broken. I, m me and my sisters had to live in, 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 in fear because my parents used drugs and alcohol, and there was violence in our home. These, this was a reality, and because of these things, it left a huge mark on my heart that grew into hatred, that grew into violence, that grew into anger that grew into misguided choices. I made a choice to abuse my bodies with drugs and alcohol. I made the cho choice to take up weapons against my own brothers. I made a choice to lose my life to this madness of violence or take another's. This was my reality. Over time and over these years, I have been to treatment. I have been to many friends and associates' funerals, and I have prayed for forgiveness for all the things I have done wrong to others. However, my story, is, is like so many that have come before me, and it will continue to be the story of young people unless we make a change today. It, it is time for us to stop reacting to the symptoms of violence and start being proactive in addressing the root causes of this issue. Everyone in this room have had their lives touched by violence, whether it's domestic abuse, gang violence, hate crimes against the LGBT communities, bullying in the schools. Violence disrupts every community in this country. At a time when our nation is in the midst of economic crisis, we cannot afford to throw our young people in jail at $80,000 a year and not concentrate our energy and investment. <laughs> not concentrate our energy and investment in saving our young people's lives through prevention and intervention. I know the power of prevention and intervention programs. At the age of 17, one of those programs, Barrios Unidos, came into my life and was able to transform the mentality of anger to a mentality of peace and love. And they were able to do this through culturally appropriate programming. My work with them took me out of a dark place and showed me that prevention and intervention, uh, prevention and intervention is a cause that I can champion. So at that age, I made a decision to put away the pain and anger and take up the banner of peace and justice in support of a solution, which is the Youth Promise Act. The Youth Promise Act, as proposed in the House and Senate, is a breakthrough piece of legislation that will implement and fund evidence-based practices through evidence-based practices related to juvenile justice and, gang, and criminal gang activity. It will work to interrupt the cradle-to-prison pipeline that is far too common today by supporting proven prevention and intervention strategies. The act will not just encourage, but require local leadership and oversight of these programs through community-based committees. There are hundreds of programs across this country that is constantly saving their communities money, but at the same time, bettering the lives of our young people. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, 16 young people every day on average is being killed right here in America. This is more young people dying in a so-called safety of their own neighborhoods than we have servicemen and women dying in the Middle East due to a war. We must remember that there is a war going on in our own country, a war that involves thousands of child soldiers right here in America. If passed, the Youth Promise Act will save the lives of our young people and future leaders from our community. We must ensure that every young person has a voice and that they're able, to give, and they're able to give the opportunity to reach their full potential. You have proven to us, Campus Progress have proven to us that you have the power, you have the strength to pass breakthrough legislation like the healthcare, uh, healthcare reform. And you will do this with the DREAM Act. But at this moment, we need your help. We need your help to pass the Youth Promise Act. 
Currently, we have 230 representatives, representatives co-sponsored in the House, and that is, that is enough for it to pass. But right now, we need to get it passed through the Senate. This is where we need your help. So we're asking you, sincerely, from the bottom and with all my heart, to visit youthpromiseaction.org and sign up. And if you can see, if you want to get more involved and more educated, please see my brothers and sisters that have come here today in support of the Youth Promise Act. And at the moment, I want to acknowledge them. And if you, can, if you guys and ladies can please stand. This is the future of our country. Not the future of tomorrow, but the future of right now. These young men and women have worked tirelessly to, to, to get this bill passed, and we must continue to support them. And I am so grateful to know these men and women. I am so grateful to know these young men. At this moment, I know that I probably don't have that much time. It's a zero on the clock. <laughs> I ask you if you can please join us in this movement. I ask you to please get educated. I ask you to please remember the babies that have been lost to this violence in this country. And I am so grateful. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen.